Whew. It's taking a lot of tapping, but it is coming. I've got it almost back to where I started. But don't forget that also means I've got that inside bushing pushed all the way out to here. So I am making progress. Getting closer. Well, as soon as number one pops out, then it'll get easier because I'll only be pushing uh, against the friction of one pressed bushing. One down, one to go. Yep. Got the oil grooves in it and everything. This one's got a little bit of a number on it. JB10. Hmm. Well, I don't care because I already sourced it. And here's the inner one. Same markings. Well, it's funny. I uh, printed out the exploded view of the parts diagram for the uh, power steering gear on this tractor so that I could keep track of uh, reassembly order, mainly in this section here. But what's funny is, you know, I did see the picture with the two bushings, but if you'll notice, item 35, it's only pointing to one bushing. It's not pointing to two. So that's why I didn't realize there was two in this side. And you'd think, well, there's two pictured. Why wouldn't you assume that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because if you look over on this side, opposite side, there's two pictured here, and they're only pointing to one. And I know for a fact there's only one bushing on this outboard end of this housing. Because as we all know now, the inboard side is supported by this roller bearing configuration. The, uh, the dreaded bearing that we had to make. So... That's why if I see two over here and there's really only one and they're not calling out the other one, it makes me think there's only one over on this side. Not the case. There was actually two on this side. Furthermore, I believe, if we look at number 35 for this diagram, uh, that's 34, 35, there's your uh, part number, 75080HA. Oh, look at that. Quantity of three. That would be the dead giveaway. So if you need one of these bushings, I've got them on eBay, but I'm about to have only one left until another order comes in because, well, lo and behold, it turns out I've got to use three. Should have ordered six. I wanted to have an extra set so I could sell them. Oh, well. Ah, installation's going a lot easier because I'm pushing the bushing in. This inboard bushing, I'm pushing it in from this side, and the outboard one, I'll push it in from the other side so I don't have to push two bushings. And... Uh, it's going in pretty easily, so just a light tapping is all it's requiring. That way I don't have to worry about deforming the bushing. Okay, that one's in, and I've driven it in so that the edge is right at the edge of that little uh, bevel. Now I can install the other one from the other side. All right, this one I need a little more clearance on this side, so I really only want to use my arbor without this uh, chisel that I got jammed in the end there. That, got, that worked its way into that metal as I was pounding it. It's in there pretty tight, so now i got to get that out. <laughs> Boy, that thing's really jammed in there. I can wiggle it just a little bit, but it does not want to come out. Luckily for me, that's not a blind hole. So I'll just stick a drift in from this side and tap it out. All right, got the chisel removed. So now I'm going to hold this as straight as I can to get it started and tap it lightly with the side of the hammer like I did when I started this whole thing. And uh, we'll get that one in. What's great about these bushings is that they're pretty much self-aligning because you've got a bevel at the edge of the bore or a chamfered edge at the edge of the bore and then there's a chamfer or a bevel on the very edge of the bushing on both sides so no matter which side you insert and uh, so basically if you've got it fairly straight and you start tapping it in it'll line itself up and now you can see it's in there straight and ready to go so now I can actually do it with one hand and and I'm just gently tapping it in. I'm moving it very little at a time. I don't want to be pounding on it because I don't want to ri risk deforming this end here. And that will give me just uh, other problems. Okay, that one's in. So now before I put the seal in, I want to check the fit of the uh, lever shaft. Well, right now it's too tight. It doesn't want to go in. So it could be this area on the shaft here that's all oxidized. Rust, light coating. Um, maybe once I got past there, it would be okay. So I think what I want to do is I want to see if I can clean this up. I guess you know what I can do. I can take some measurements and see whether or not this is significantly more, uh, significantly larger diameter than this. If it is, then just cleaning up this end might do the trick. If not, then I've got to do what the service manual warns you may have to do in some situations, which is ream 
the new bushings to accept the shaft and unfortunately I don't have a reamer large enough to fit that. I may have to invest in one which stinks because it's not like I need one of those very often. Okay I just measured this shaft and it's uh 1.372 I think uh, down here on this area where you can tell by the uh, shininess that clearly that was where it was riding on the uh, inner inboard bushing so you can see it's 72 maybe 73 thousandths there and that is almost the same on where the outboard bushing is riding again you can see about 72 or 73 thousandths and then this area here where the oxidation is oops too far if I can get it right on that band or it's a little nasty it is 75 yeah let's see yeah, about 75 thousandths so it is about two two and a half thousandths more thickness on this outer edge so I'm going to clean it up and see if we can't make that go away and then try it again and if that doesn't work then I'm looking at uh, looking at investing in a reamer okay here's my big bench grinder with the coarse uh, or stiff wire brush on it wire wheel and I cleaned up the inboard one a little bit didn't need much cleaning cleaned up the outboard bushing area and especially that whole oxidized area there. so you can see that's nice and clean now so let's uh, check the dimension again. Okay, that's good news. The uh, inboard and outboard bushing surfaces, after cleaning them, they haven't changed. So that tells me that they were pretty clean to begin with. And uh, so I'm still getting it about 72, 73 thousandths on those. But what's different now is if I come out to this outer area where the uh, rust was, where it was heavily oxidized, and I remeasure there, I'm now at... 72 or 73 thousandths just like the rest of the shaft so let's see if that two thousandths did it for me yep that ain't happening so without an adjustable reamer to go in there and take a few thousandths off that uh that darn uh new bushing there this ain't gonna work which is a shame but it is what it is I certainly don't want to force it. So, looks like we're gonna have another delay. And the other thing too is, uh, it occurred to me that I really should have checked these bushings for wear and uh, seen if I could source those and replace them because I got a feeling those might be worn. And I'm gonna go get the camshaft uh, assembly yeah, it's actually called a camshaft assembly. I know it's kind of weird. But anyways, I'm going to go get the uh, camshaft assembly and uh, insert it in there and see how much play we have in that. Yeah, the journals on this camshaft assembly look pretty good, except for on the upper one right here, there's these little areas right here that I can actually feel some roughness with my fingernail. But otherwise, it's pretty good. And then uh, the bottom one looks real good. So... I don't think I have to worry so much about wear on these. There is a, I can test the OD on those and compare it to the uh, the specs, but it doesn't make much sense to bother doing that because I'm not buying one of these assemblies. Um, even if you can find one, they're uh, prohibitively expensive. There must be a company making these aftermarket because I've seen new ones on eBay for the manual steering boxes, uh, which must have been a lot more popular because I don't believe I've, ever seen any for the power steering version of this tractor well I don't know I mean this you can hear the play in there you can see the play in there oddly enough it's side to side very little up and down it tells me that that has worn most likely the bushing has born, worn in a way where it is no longer perfectly round uh, it's playing every direction question is is it gonna be enough 
to warrant replacing those bushings? You know, A, are the bushings available? B, if they're not, can I source them like I sourced the other ones that were discontinued? Uh, and then the other issue is, I'll tell you, this upper bushing, no big deal changing this upper bushing. The lower bushing, a whole nother can of worms. To change the lower bushing, what I believe you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have the steering box off the tractor, and I believe there's an, actually an end cap underneath here that can be removed. It's pressed in right here, and then you press that, you press that out, and uh, I'm sure you probably destroy it in the process. You push the bushing out, put the new bushing in, and then put a new cap on there, and none of that's going to be happening because, again, I can't get this off the tractor without grinding it off, grinding all those welds. So, you can just forget about that. It's a good thing there's a lot of grease in there because water actually managed to get down in there. I'm going to get that water out before I leave. All right, I just used some paper towels to get as much of that moisture and water sitting down in the bottom there out. And uh, I'm going to throw some grease in there just to protect that area from uh, oxidation. And then I'm going to bag this whole thing with plastic. All right, now I triple bagged it with some uh, plastic shopping bags, and I'll throw this, what's left of this, uh, I think this is actually a tube cover or something. I don't know. But this guy was using it to cover the tractor out in the backwoods, and I've been using it too, so I'll throw this on there to keep the heavy stuff off.